Hey Taurus, it's me Stormy and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. Now Taurus, before we jump in and I can tell you about this electrifying year you've got coming up, the 2018 birthday appointments are available right now. Click in the description box down below. It's my yearly gift to you, but when these appointments are gone, they are gone and there's so many changes coming for Stormy Grace this year, but I did not want to miss out on getting you in touch with your birthday appointments. So click in the description box down below and take advantage. All right, Taurus, so like I said, 2018, a pretty electrifying year for you, and I say that because we've got Uranus moving into your sign for the first time in 84 years. 84 years, this is a really big deal. Now, while Uranus is gonna come into Taurus this year, it's also gonna retrograde back into Aries, so you kinda get a little taste, a little flavor of what Uranus and Taurus is gonna be like, and really one of the things it's gonna be like for you, Taurus, is change and that is not always the word that we Taurans because I'm a Tauran too uh, we don't always like to hear that but change is necessary because it's almost as if these ideas that you've had about security for a very long time Uranus is going to need to shake you so that you can see that you can be bigger more expansive and you are more deserving than you've been giving yourself credit for so we're going to do Uranus into Taurus it's going to back up into Aries so still in this 12th house space which is delicious because you'll get to work on some things behind the scenes that's what we do in the 12th house but once you're in a shows you how to get unstuck then you got to go take some action so you may be working on some projects getting some things together for the remainder of the year then in 2019 Uranus moves back into Taurus and stays there for a pretty long trek and you have got new innovative rebellious energy to work with and the rebellion is really less about let's rebel against the world it's you rebelling against what you thought made you safe so that you can be out and expansive and let the world see how absolutely gorgeous you are so Uranus and Taurus it's going to be doing its thing this year I want to tell you too don't worry about taking notes don't freak out or any of that I'm going to break everything down by date like I always do okay now let's talk about partnerships this year because you've got to have people in your life to help make your dreams come true this is a time in the world where people make your dreams come true in collaboration with your effort and you've got jupiter the most expansive wise planet in scorpio so in your relationship sector all through 2018 at least until we get to november now remember jupiter doesn't just bring luck and wisdom he's not just hanging out being like i'm here with flowers of wisdom that's not how it works jupiter wants you to expand but he doesn't want you to just expand your thinking expanding your thinking really does nothing you can stand still with expanded thinking he wants you to get out get out into the world get out and make new partnerships get out bring your wisdom to the table let other people share their wisdom with you and he brings you the opportunities to do this so in partnerships all kinds business romance relationships with yourself relationships with whatever you call your creator that spiritual space you get the opportunity to expand here now i really am excited to talk about the luck and support about this because scorpio energy is moving very comfortably with yours it's your opposite but it moves very comfortable in a torn space and since jupiter is here until november 8th then it will move on to sagittarius um one of the things I think you can find happening is that truly partnerships come your way, especially things around business if you're putting yourself out there. I think that you can really see some opportunities to maybe collaborate in ways that you had never even considered. But it's also a space where I feel like people show up in our team Taurus. And there may be people you didn't know were on your team and on your side and had your back. So there's some amazing opportunities here. Now, in terms of personal relationships, I also feel like this is just a game changing kind of year for you. There is a willingness with Scorpio energy to have depth to have intimacy in partnerships. I'm telling you, if you are, you've just really started to date somebody new as we come into 2018, um, or you maybe have been dating for a little bit, 2018 could be a year, Taurus, where you're making a bigger commitment. You know, maybe you're moving in together. Some of you might be getting married. Um, some of you could be getting engaged. I mean, any version of making a conscious commitment is definitely on the table now. And I really feel like relationships are just gonna blossom so much for you this year. And you're gonna learn a lot about yourself from these relationships, but not in the sense of a heavy learning where it's like, eh, I'm still crazy. More like, wow, this is real. This thing is real, right? It's a really tightly um, put together, 
intimate kind of energy. Now, I will say that there are a couple dates that I think are important to pay attention to with this Jupiter energy because there's a couple times he's going to come into a really nice trine with Neptune and then a couple months where he's going to come into a working energy with Pluto, which is all about bringing um, the wisdom of change to the table. So we're looking at May 25th and August 19th is when you're going to see Jupiter and Neptune interacting. This is a delicious energy. It's it's just a wonderful, intuitive, faithful, fun, singing, joyful, spiritual, psychic kind of energy to be bringing to the table. And then January, April, and September, we see Jupiter and Pluto interacting with each other and we're gonna see some change. Don't worry, I'll break that down as we get to those months, okay? Now, on November 8th, Jupiter is gonna move out of Scorpio and into Sagittarius where this is his ruling sign. So he's very comfortable here into your eighth, eighth house though. So you can start to see benefits from a partner's money or sources that you didn't necessarily earn the money, right? Maybe there's a collaboration, maybe you get a loan, maybe there's there's um, benefit in taxes, finance, inheritance, something like that, right? But whatever it is, there's a space where I think you have grown a lot with Saturn being in your eighth house for such a long time that you really understand how to use money differently, or maybe even it could be something too, because the eighth house is debts. You could be paying off debts really wisely. You you could, that could start to happen, right? You make some moves on that. Or an investment, maybe something you've invested in. Maybe you bought a shirt 10 years ago and you're like, I will never wear that. And then you put it on and it brings an opportunity. I mean, you have to think very vastly when Jupiter's in Sagittarius because Sagittarius is a very broad, big picture, all-inclusive kind of thinker. So whatever happens, this movement into the eighth house is going to start to give you some luck, some wisdom, and bringing that whole shebang to the table. Now, while I think that I want to talk about this really quickly before I lose my train of thought, but while we're talking about relationships of all varieties, we do have both Venus and Mars taking a retrograde this year as well. Now, between August, excuse me, October 5th and November 16th, Venus is going to take her retrograde. And this is important in relationships because when Venus, who is your ruling planet, travels through a retrograde, you have to, to re, we look back during retrogrades, right? So you have to re-look at your relationships. Venus very much so cares about that and your money. You're going to re-look at your money. You're going to re-look at business partnerships, romantic relationships, relationships with coworkers. Are you loving yourself? Are you bringing your value and your talents to the table? All of these things, if you, if you own a business, you may also be looking at um, whether you need to employ or unemploy some people, this may be a very big thing. But whatever it is, things are going to come under a review to reconnect them correctly. And I promise you that this is a wonderful energy for seeing any cracks that are showing up in yourself, in relationships, whatever. And it's not about ending them all the time. It's about an adjustment, okay? So that said, when I look at your, your career and your opportunities that these partnerships may bring in as well, We've got some beautiful solar eclipses and eclipses that are going to be happening this year as well. We've got one starting January 31st, but the one I think that is really significant for you off the top is going to be February 15th. This is a solar eclipse, so we're going to begin some things. This is such an innovative energy for you. You'll see in the eclipse energies, it's very much like it was in 2017, a mix between Leo and Aquarian energies, but these are also connected to a cycle that started back in 2016. So think back, what were you working on in 2016? What were you trying to manifest and what does it look like as you get current and what actions can you take to continue that or adjust that vision so that you can move it forward? A lot of this I think will really have to do, Taurus, with your career, your ambition, your soul level calling or your reputation out in the world, something like that. So you may find that there's a little bit of ebb and flow from this solar eclipse as you're trying to just get your life together and get this goal on track. Now, when we get to June 26th through July 27th, this is that Mars retrograde I was talking about. Now, typically, Taurus, I don't think you run around having issues with authority figures, but this energy, you could find yourself feeling really rebellious and you might be having a problem with people who you perceive are in authority, people who are actually in authority. There could be a government issue that comes up for you. Um, but as a whole, 
what's really going on is you are needing to adjust your actions in some kind of plan, right? Because that's what a Mars retrograde is doing. It brings some stressful energy up. And in between there, in July, we've also got a lunar eclipse. So it's going to show you some endings around this area of your life as well. And it could bring some really unexpected things because this Mars retrograde is starting in Aquarius, right? So you could have unexpected issues. You could have unexpected things come up. One of the things I think about when I also think about um, anything connected to Aquarius or Uranian energy is this could be a year where you see um, a significant change with with um, male figures in your life or your ideas around male figures in your life. This Mars retrograde is a re- looking at, re-editing, reconnecting, regrouping kind of energy. You may have to take different actions that you were planning that you were or were not planning to take to redirect some things. And that's okay. This is all about getting into the right kind of alignment. And Mars just shows you new action needs to be taken. Now, I traditionally do suggest, and we do in astrology, that if you can wait to have cosmetic surgery or elective procedures until after Mars is out of retrograde, that's much better because Mars is over things that are war-ish and cutting, right? Surgeons, that's definitely war-ish. So if you can wait just a hot minute for that, you know, your brand new nose will still be there afterwards, all right? Now, we have also now, got Saturn who moved into the sign of Capricorn back in 2017, right? And so it's going to be traveling through your ninth house. So this is kind of a cool energy because for some of you, you may be actually putting a lot of structure around something educational, something that you are studying in higher learning, certifications, licensings, all these kinds of things. And, and Saturn's up there with Pluto as well. So you definitely got to change coming to this ninth house area. For for some of you, it may be that you are ending or completing a degree. For some of you, you may see that you need to jump into a program, something around teaching, philosophy, foreign travel, getting a YouTube channel out there, finally publishing, broadcasting that book, getting yourself out there, right? This is a solid energy because remember, Capricorn wants to achieve. So for some of you, this is going to look very achievement oriented, especially as Saturn is going to be here for the next approximately three years, okay? This is a very cool and exciting time. I can tell you as a Taurus with Saturn and Capricorn, I'm ending an advanced degree and that could be something happening for each of you as well. I think we need to go on ahead and jump in and break this month down by date so I can get you out and ready for 2018, all right? January 31st, we have got a total, and this is important, I'll be talking about it this year, the difference between the total and the partial eclipse, and I'll also be letting you know when they're coming. But we are going to be having January 31st, a total lunar eclipse happening in Leo, so happening in your fourth house. We've got changes coming to your thinking around home, right? The total tells us that there's a different depth that we're working with here, and I'll be bringing you that knowledge. So looking for this eclipse happening in your fourth house changes, endings, acknowledgements, adjustments around the fourth house around foundational thinking property all of those things February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse happening in Aquarius, and this is your 10th house. So new beginnings in career, new collaborations, new things like that. May 15th, we've got Uranus stepping into Taurus. How about that? Staying there until November. November retrogrades back into Aries until March of 2019. Then we get a solid stint of Uranus in Taurus. June, 16, June 26th to August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde happening there in Aquarius. Look out for some expected things. Look out for new innovative actions that you may need to be taking. July 13th, we've got a partial solar eclipse happening in Cancer, actually. So a wonderful nurturing energy, and this is around communication for you. So you may be finding, or you may be, Cancer is a home sign. Maybe you have moved your house and you need to sign a new lease. Maybe you are needing to communicate um, make some changes to your website, right? This is a wonderful energy for doing that and Cancer is going to make it feel homey while also being very protective of the energies that are happening. So it's a wonderful starting energy. When we get to the 27th of July, we've got a total lunar eclipse happening in Aquarius. Again, some endings, changes, adjustments to the career thing. October 5th through November 16th, Venus is in that retrograde. She starts her retrograde in the sign of Scorpio, so in your seventh and your opposite. Then she's going to back up into Libra, so in your sixth house. So you may be making some adjustments at this time to things that have to do with work, 
health, your mental health, daily routines could certainly be different at this time as well. And as we end the year, we have got November 8th, Jupiter, our planet of luck, brilliance, and expansion, moving home, moving into the sign of Sagittarius in your eighth house, getting you ready to have brand new confidence, brand new opportunities, and brand new experiences around things where there's joint finances, astrology, metaphysical things, things at another depth and level. All right, Torrens, I love you so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Get your birthday appointment by clicking in the description box down below. And if I can help you, you need a reading, you need a chart, you need just help get in your life, I'm here to help you. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.